again. And we're back at the property. And this time, while we wait to figure out our driveway situation, which, good news, the uh, Home Association and the Design Review Board have approved our um, final design for the driveway. So now we're hunting down materials and trying to find out a good way to rent an excavator from Home Depot or one of the other box stores that might have that, or maybe a bigger commercial unit too. Uh, just depends on how much soil we think we're going to move here. But anyway, it's early December. I'm hot enough. I'm just going down to a t-shirt. It's like in the low 60s here, but the sun's so intense. It warms you up real fast. But you can see Judy. I'm cold. <laughs> bundled up, real tight and warm. But... Not to fear if I do get cold, I do have in my uh, hand cart here uh, my sweatshirt, so I'll put it back on and stay warm. But right now I anticipate a real good workout taking this hand cart with the auger and some test sample jars, and I'm going to collect some uh, material. Um, what we're going to do later in this episode is make some adobe bricks with some recipes we want to try, one in particular. Uh, that is mostly made out of Portland cement, um, type 1. I hope that's the right one. I've been reading back and forth between type 1 and type 2, and I'm not sure. I couldn't find a real clear answer on what's best for adobe bricks, so I'm just trying type 1 first, and we'll see what happens with these bricks. i got to believe they're going to be fairly strong because we are targeting about a 10% mix of uh, Portland cement into this. We also got these buckets here. Uh, on the hand cart, they're the 20 gallon tubs. We're going to collect a couple samples of uh, soil from the site and take it back to the house with us in Albuquerque. And that's where we're going to make our adobe bricks and, and do our little special recipe. See if we get a, a good kind of mud that's going to make a nice brick. And uh, hopefully get, get them to a lab and get some stress tests done and our little water tests and so forth. Make sure that we got a Good soil as well as good cement here. But anyway, we gotta carry our wares up to the top of the property, probably another eighth of a mile away, uphill mostly. And uh, as we can't traverse this with a truck and uh, this ravine here where the water comes through. I get um, to carry the shovel. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna try to not lose the auger oh, going up the hill. Lord. Cheers. <laughs> Unfortunately, this early December weekend, we did not get very far before dumping the tub with the auger and other miscellaneous materials in there, um, trying to get from the truck, across the ravine, and it just wobbles right out, no matter how tight I was trying to hold it on the hand cart. But anyway, I'll carry it up since this load, this point is uh, pretty easy. And it's coming down, it's gonna be kind of crazy with uh, two tubs, you know, half full of soil. Gonna weigh a bit more. Uh. Okay, we got the auger set up. I've already got it started in the ground a little bit. And of course, I got a little chillier once we got up here and the sun went behind the clouds. So I'm back with my sweatshirt staying warm. But yeah, this is a new all electric uh, Ryobi uh, 40 volt unit. Pretty sweet. Um, seems to go right into the soil just fine. So I'm going to try to go down all the way so I can get some samples of the soil from the full 32 inches down. So here we go. So much for the, the anti-kickback support. <laughs> Okay, let's try a different spot. Let's try it in slow speed.
the soil does turn brown. After a bit, I'm gonna take the camera over a little closer so you can see the interesting findings. So over here is the first hole. I kept hitting into like a big root system or rock or something. The second hole, I've got almost all the way down to the depth of the auger. And you can see the white walls, but then as you get a little further down near the bottom there, it turns kind of brownish. So the, the white that I'm hitting is like the calcium layer and uh, so we're gonna have some interesting things we gotta discuss about the soil quality here. All this calcium up here, I don't know what the impact will be on building a house, but hopefully this isn't bad news. But here's the uh, post hole digger auger, right, OB 40 HP, whatever, 40 volts. Seems like a good steady unit, big heavy duty steady unit, lots of torque, I'm real happy with it. I think we paid, including our sales tax, about 370 bucks for this unit with an eight inch bit and a little charging station that comes with it. I love the fact that it's rechargeable electric, no more small engine breakdowns and all that good stuff. But anyway, gotta take a break and figure this out. So I feel like I'm on that Disney movie holes as we go around digging holes here. Like over in this spot, again, more calcium, uh, at least at the surface, and it feels like I'm going through rock or something. So it's probably, some real uh, solid calcium deposits here, or lime, or whatever it is. I thought lime's more of a processed thing with chemical, other chemicals in it, but it's probably lime or calcium. yeah, um, you, calcium. But if you know what this is, <laughs> leave a comment. Yes, we, please. <laughs> yeah, because we don't have a clue. But if you look around our official bill site, there's actually lots of these little spots in the surface where calcium pops up. But there is some hope. There's one hole I went down the full 30 inches and I didn't see a so any sign of any calcium. And it's this one here. Hopefully you can see that right there. Lots of good soil all around the rim of that. Went all the way down. So anyway, this is the bill site behind me. The driveway comes down right through here. And uh, and behind me more, there's uh, other little things that look like roadways, but it's really flood areas, I guess. Anyway, we're going to have some interesting challenges ahead. Cheers. So where we're at and what we're doing is we're collecting, you know, these classic Home Depot uh, orange buckets. I guess it's over here somewhere. There it is. See it right there so filling these up five gallons at a time and uh hauling them back across the way where judy's headed where i have my hand cart and the two uh, 20 gallon uh buckets or the what do they call them totes whatever um and we're going to take uh probably 20 to 25 gallons of soil back including one five gallon bucket or maybe four and a half I don't think I topped it off quite full five gallons of that very calcified soil. And I also collected a sample of it that's soaking in some water right now, waiting for it to separate into its layers so I can kind of visually get a better idea of what's in there. I've read up on uh, Google, believe it or not, we have internet way out here in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. And uh, just joking, actually, the internet's not bad out here on our phones. I'm kind of surprised. But pretty soon, I guess, we'll have Starlink, or maybe the beta's already out. But looking forward to that out here, too. That'll be neat. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to hand cart it back down to the truck. Unfortunately, I can't get the truck up here. Now, without uh, risking getting it stuck in a ravine back down at the bottom there. So we'll take it back to the house, where we're going to then put it into the cement mixer, along with the right portion of uh, Portland cement type 1. And uh, as I was just starting to say, too... Uh, I've read on the internet out here that 
the uh, calcium rich soil actually is pretty good for adobe bricks it's not a bad thing depending on real ratio and all that i imagine so we will have some fun playing with mixing up uh, adobe and placing them in our mold for our bricks and you'll see that on this episode here shortly when we get back to the house in albuquerque cheers so here i am about not even halfway up the to the hill from the bill site where the crest is where it then starts to going downhill and me and my hand cart and all this soil and the ryobi are sinking into the softer soil pretty deep at times it makes it really hard getting up here so i think this idea worked a lot better in my head than in actuality so don't try this at home kids okay cheers there it is Okay, so we're down at the clubhouse. Just giving you a little view of what we have down here. It's locked at the moment, so we can't go inside, but you can see the stalls for horses. And then behind us here, the building itself, patio in the back, and a uh, little horseshoe pit down there, and more patio space, I guess, for extending the party. Maybe that's like a little dance area. <laughs> Get some music going. I don't see any speakers out here. But yeah, this is the back side of the clubhouse at Deer Canyon Preserve. Part of what your HOA fees uh, pay for so you can get uh, access when you want to throw a big shindig and enjoy some fun with friends and family and all that. So, cheers. So the first thing we do to make adobe bricks is you gotta build a form. So I've got three one by four by 12 foot long uh, one by fours. And the two outer ones here will be for <clears throat> doing the uh, outer rings of the um, form. And then the one I'm chopping here I'll make uh, about 10 little pieces from this board. It'll be the 14 inch side that's going across. And you'll see in just a moment as I finish this up and I screw it together. Okay, here I am. I finished cutting the little 14 inch strips for going um, the other way across the, the mold here. So we're going to have basically enough. Um, I was short of little material, but I have some scrap material where I was able to Take this little scrap piece of plywood and another little strip of wood and I'll be able to put them together to get that last spot taken care of right in here so I can get that tenth brick in this 12 foot length of 1x4s here. So now I just gotta pre-drill and screw things together and make sure that it's all nice and level and clean and uh, hopefully we'll have a nice good form for making those 14 by 11, that's 14 across this way, 11 going this way, 11 inches, and then it's going to be three and a half inches high from the one by four's height. And of course, when you're stacking these bricks with the extra mud mortar you use for stacking them, uh, that gives you about another half an inch. So you're right at four inches for the height of each brick you're doing. So, okay, here we are cement mixer for making our adobe mud and of course earlier i was building and assembling our little uh, brick mold again eh, 11 by 14 going across and three and a half deep using just one by fours cheap pine well used to be cheap back in the day now it's like 12 13 bucks from this one of these little 12 foot sticks so, anyway, I'm going to start taking the dirt here in these two blue tubs behind me and mixing them in with some water, get a good slurry made up, and then lastly I'll start getting uh, the Portland cement, Type 1 Portland cement mixed in. And when it gets to a good consistency, I'll go ahead and start spreading it through the mold and hopefully we'll get six, seven, eight bricks from this batch. So I'll point out one other thing. You'll see in here some of the bigger little dirt clods or rocks. 
normally you'd sift those out and when we get to production mode i sure will we'll have a little sifter i'll build i've seen them in the field before and uh, they help you get the bigger chunks out so you have a more smoother better consistent adhering uh, brick this will of course weaken it a little bit but i don't think it'll matter that much for these test bricks if they still test as strong as I think they will with all the cement we're going to put in. I don't think this will be a factor. Here we go. Okay, we're going. Yep. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we got this mud. Pretty good consistency. The problem I'm having is, of course, this thing when you mix up three and a half yards of, I mean, cubic feet of this stuff. It's probably more like two and a half cubic feet. Though the mixer's capacity is supposedly three and a half. But go ahead and zoom up closer to this. Show our viewers just what kind of mud we've got. It's a nice consistency. It'll spread pretty easy if we can get it out of here. You don't want it very runny. Um, so I'm going to have to scoop it out with a shovel, I guess. Because you just can't get it close enough and move it once it's all mixed up. This thing just weighs a ton. And so... That's what we're going to do next is shovel it out into the molds and see what we get. not that it's heavy it's that it gets very it's very sticky it's like paste you know, getting it out of here and so it creates like a suction with the shovel when you try to pull it out but uh, try to get some more Try to spread it around. I'll take a little trial to it later. Try to get a little more consistent look to it. So for this fairly small batch, I used about three big heaping shovelfuls of the Portland cement. Because um, I only used probably 15 gallons, which probably pretty close to two cubic feet in this uh, mix here. Just a suction. Okay, cut the camera. 
Okay, the end of the brick making. We've got one, two, three, four, five and a half. Didn't quite get as much as I hoped. If we had had a bigger cement mixer, safer capacity or whatever, probably could have gotten more done. This is a really great uh, lesson for us. One thing we kind of learned is we really need uh, heavy equipment. You know, a good uh, tractor with a bucket, good bucket for mixing this. We've seen a few YouTube videos where some folks have mixed their adobe in a big pit with their tractor and just taking big scoops and using the bucket to stir things up. And that's probably a much better way than trying to do this. It's very slow. It's a lot of manpower and the mixer just doesn't do a good job of mixing. Uh, you find yourself, especially with our soil, it's very soupy, sticky, pasty. Um, no matter how you mix it, if you try to get a little drier, a little wetter, it just will not pour out of this. You just gotta like get in there in the end with your bare hands and just suck it out and get it into the forms and trowel it over and try to make them look reasonably consistent between each brick. So that's it for now. Uh, one of the things we got to do after dinner is try to break these loose from the form and hopefully they'll break okay. Um, just don't know with how sticky and pasty they are. I'm a little worried. Anyway, other than that, cheers. Now isn't that beautiful? Five of them, they just, just slid right out pretty easily uh, from the uh, mold here. Mold's a little dirty, I gotta go clean it up. But I cleaned up our cement mixer and the rest of the concrete, Portland cement, excuse me. <sighs> Still got plenty left for future projects, but yeah, that's kind of amazing. We kind of set up enough that they slid out pretty easily without breaking apart. Because I could see as I'm pulling the mold up and out, the bricks were in the middle starting to like fall through, but they were holding on to the edges of the wood of the the mold, almost like they were gonna like rip apart. But then I saw one start sliding through and I just kept pushing it a little higher and then they all slid right on through, just beautiful sight. Anyway, got to get these covered with another tarp because it's going to be below freezing tonight, I think. And I don't know how well or how the curing process is going to take it with these uh, being exposed directly to uh, freezing weather. Um, and I want to then uncover it tomorrow when it gets back into the 60s again and let them keep curing and hopefully get a little more solid and get them on their sides where they can then dry properly and then we can have real bricks to go test once they're fully cured anyway that's it for now cheers so in our pantry here we keep our little carboy here of uh, beer as we brew it and we got another batch of nice dark stout going as you can see if there's other parties that might be interested in partnering and starting a little small brewery operation in the little town of Mountaineer, we'd be interested in uh, joining forces as the little town of Mountaineer certainly is uh, short on beer and wine selections, I'm afraid. Cheers. Thank you for watching an episode of Nature Preserve Life in Mountaineer, New Mexico. If you'd like to follow along and support our channel, please press the subscribe button and gong that bell to be notified. After all, it's free. Free is a very good price. In the future, we'll plan to focus our episodes on our eco-friendly build of earthen construction and dark night astronomy, that big guy there, and tourism of the regional area, as well as establishing a Patreon account for the sole support of wildlife in Deer Canyon Preserve. So stay tuned. Cheers.